Hi, my name is Johan Hahn. I am an artist and art instructor. I teach at MFA and some other institutions. If you want to check out my artwork, you can visit johanhan.com or chaseyounggallery.com. You can also find my work at Instagram, Johan Han. Today we are going to work on deconstruction and reconstruction activity in this demo. The content we are going to deal with in this demo is deconstruction and reconstruction. In other words, making drawing, undo the drawing, redo the drawing. Those are the activities we are going to go through. This kind of idea started from our master painters such as Picasso or Brock when they came up with the idea of synthetic cubism. So basically we are going to navigate what kind of different perspectival um, variety can be entailed in one single drawing. So we're going to start with working normal portrait. It can be your own selfie or somebody else's face. And we're going to break it apart and reconjointing them so that we can make unseen types of new world captured in this two-dimensional format. I have the previous example of using black paper to do similar types of exercise and we're not going to use black paper we're going to use white paper to do that but as I said what is important in this demonstration is to rethink different types of perspective in one drawing. Our work of inspiration today is um, the Chinese artwork which has been shown in MFA Boston in 2017 exhibition called Chinese Eight Brokens. This painting unfortunately doesn't have name. It's anonymous painting dated 1900. Ink and color on paper. And this painting was part of the exhibition that has something to do with Chinese Bapo painting tradition. So mid 19th century there was a movement in Chinese art that is called Bapo. So they tried to make this painting almost look like collage and the interesting part of that painting tradition is that they just pick and choose some of the documents or object which has been damaged or been dated as uh, ephemeral. So some of the painting has been eaten by the worm or it's tainted or it's been spilled. They somehow put those images together to make very interesting non-traditional collage looking paintings. And in the show 2017, they showed those work right next to Western tradition similar to that, it's called, which is called Trempeloy. And this idea goes hands in hand with the deconstruction and reconstruction activities we're going to do it today. In this painting, you can see the fans has been destroyed by the worms and some part of the manuscript has been burned or torn apart in but then they are constructed very unique composition by putting them together that's the work of bapo painting and also eight means lucky number in china so eight brokens had something to do with the lucky number of chinese tradition together with that 19th century uh, art phenomena, which was very popular back then. Now I will explain to you what materials we need for executing this exercise. We need very basic, simple materials today. First, we just need um, 
paper, which can be 9 by 12, or you can use a bigger one. This is a bleak brand, or you can also use Bristol and other paper brand. So it can be just a regular drawing paper. It will be good to use. And we will need pencils. I have right here 2B pencils, and also I have a 4B pencils. You can have 6B ebony pencils, but I do not recommend you to have anything which named by H or HB types of pencils. 2B, 4B, 6B ebony are good. And I love this Japanese brand called Tombo. It's a little pricey, but you don't have to have the Tombo pencil. You can use different types of pencil. And of course we need erasers too. I have this kneaded eraser right here. And also you can have a plastic erasers as well. That's all we need for executing this exercise. Step number one. Portrait drawing. This part will be more like a classical drawing exercise. You can be either using your selfie or anyone's face photo. Silly or goofy photos are very welcomed as well. And those who are a little too intimidated to use your face photo, you can substitute it with still life, so don't worry about it. I start with roughly pointing out top and bottom ends and the size so that I can measure the size of the face better. I would recommend you to draw the face as large as you can, including a little bit of the shoulders as well, just like a passport photo or your ID photo. I can see that my face is slightly tilted in the photo. So you can see that I gently make a diagonal axis as a guidance. In this process, I make the sketches very lightly to begin with. If you push your pencil too hard before you know the accurate proportion, you may spend too much time erasing the lines. And make sure you draw general to specific, not the other way around. As you may notice, I use lots of vertical and horizontal lines. Those lines function almost like architectural composition, construction. They help you to position your eyes, nose, and mouth more accurately. Another useful tip is to move your hand around the entire page all the time. In other words, it is better not to spend too much time at one little spot. And once you put your lines down, that doesn't mean they are 100% correct. You keep redefining the lines and proportions as the drawing progresses. When it comes to the shading, it is nice to begin with soft and gentle shades and keep making overlaying gradation. My face slowly gets to look as similar as the photo image. I decided to use photo of one of the most exciting days in my life, my wedding reception photo. As you may know by now, I'm the Korean guy on the left and the tall Russian man is my husband. It was truly unique reception we had the event at Russian restaurant wearing Korean hanbok, the traditional Korean garment. I chose this particular shot because of the smiling face I wanted to use. Now that I'm making some finer touches of the portrait, so you can see I'm defining the mouth, a little muscle part, and extra shading here and there on the faces, some untouched part, and that's it. Step number two, deconstructing. Now that it's time for me to destroy my beautiful face in different way, 
I'm taking the page off this sketchbook and dissecting it into six pieces. You can either cut the paper with scissors and knives neatly or tear it aggressively. I just want you to have six plus pieces of paper as a result. Then you can reconfigure those pieces however way you want. There are multiple choices for you to make. You can design them as rectilineal, circular, or free format, etc. You can even superimpose them as it is process of collage. The only thing you don't want to do is to make your reconfigured puzzle piece look too similar to your original image. Step number three. Reconstruction. This is our last part. You can place your collage formation aside or you can take a photo of it first and bring a new piece of paper. In this time of reconstruction, you draw the cutout formation on a new paper. Before you start, just take some time thinking about what we have done. So what was the most exciting, surprising, and unexpectedly fun moment you had from reconfigured collage? Was it the crevice between papers? The connection of lines? Balance between more shaded and less shaded sections? To me, the torn part of paper textures looks very unique. And I like the dynamics on the collage, which reminds me of shattered window or mirror. In this process, I chose to include the crevice of dark table and textures of the paper edges, as I mentioned. You don't have to do this way, but I chose to do that. Like the Chinese Bapu painting, I'm very excited to recreate those puzzle pieces on my paper so that they function as if an implied collage. When I keep the process going, however, I'm not necessarily copying exactly how the puzzle pieces look like. That piece is the liminal or departing point of the drawing, not the ending point. In other words, I want to make sure you all have far more freedom on your decision making in your creative process. You can do different style of shading or creating extra form or shapes. In this point of drawing, I'm no longer looking at the initial shattered image. I'm connecting different shapes, shades, untouched negative spaces. I also find Small little details such as square patterns made by the spring of my sketchbook. And I realized the depth of each shape of the paper by working on the shadows. The image slowly reveals exotic quality of both Bapo painting and Picasso's multi-dimensional cubistic paintings. At the end, I'm just going to reinforce the tones so that I may be able to increase distinctive qualities of the forms on my drawing composition. So now I'm just doing little extra shading, pointing out certain parts like the leaves and my tooth part. And that's going to be the last thing I will do. And here in this point, I think I'm done by adding a little bit of that shading. That's it, and I'm finished. We are getting into the conclusion of the activity, which I called deconstruction and reconstruction drawing exercise. We just needed the simple materials today, which were pencils, erasers, and sketchbook. And by using those, we navigated the Picasso and Brock's approach to synthetic cubism 
and even further back we were talking about the Chinese 19th century tradition of drawing called Bapo, Eight Brokens. And that tradition was nearly disappeared after 1949, but then it was rediscovered by the contemporary Chinese painter called Gang Suji, who's still making uh, practicing uh, unique paintings common times and we just created this drawing which started from the regular portrait but when you see that drawing you see so many unique unexpected patterns and shapes and forms have been constructed and you can use it the same discipline with the still life as well and also, next time you can also try with pe color pencils and color other mediums to do so that you can see different facade of this exercise as well.